Welcome back. We've taken a look at the Matthew account of the rich young ruler, and now we're going to see how it's recorded in the book of Luke. So let's dive right in. Most of this will sound really familiar. Luke 18, starting with verse 18, says, A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commands. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your mother and father. Verse 21 says, All these I've kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. So again, this is very similar to the Matthew account, except for two major details. We see that Jesus tells him he still lacks one thing. And then at the very beginning of the story, Luke makes sure to mention that this man is a ruler. Now the word for ruler here in the Greek is the word archon, which means being first in power or rank being chief or prince. This refers to somebody of great influence, someone who is at the top of the list, king of the hill. These days, we'd likely say this or think this way about someone who is homecoming king or homecoming queen, uh, the CEO of a major company, the senior pastor of a church, uh, the Grammy or Oscar award winner, the valedictorian, or if you follow basketball, Steph Curry. I mean, this is someone of influence who typically gets what they want, right? It's also someone who rarely gets called out or corrected. Yet Jesus tells him, you still lack one thing, which I imagine may have stung a little bit. He may have felt offended uh, by Jesus here. To be fair, I don't know anyone who enjoys hearing that they're lacking in something or not measuring up. So how do you respond when someone points out an area where you're falling short? What do you do with criticism? Are you aware of any lack in your own life? No doubt it's hard to hear about or to face shortcomings, but today I'm going to ask you to. Because whether or not you're a person of great influence by the world's standards, for someone in your life, likely many people, the truth is that you have a powerful daily influence on them. Part of you is archon, you know, first in rank. And when you have a lack or when someone points out a lack that you have, how do you respond? As a follower of Jesus, I take great comfort in knowing that I'm not the only one who falls short, that we're all lacking something. At least for me, I know I lack uh, a lot of things, sometimes patience, self-control, rest, and even I lack in love and in kindness. So in a moment, I want to invite you to pray and ask Jesus, where do I have a lack? Where can I be honest enough with myself to recognize an area where I need to grow? And when you ask him, and when he points it out, will you listen? Or maybe God has sent someone your way already who's pointed something out in you that you didn't like hearing. Maybe for you today is the day you actually choose to pursue God's help with it. Because one of the things God wants from us is to be open to growth and to be honest about where we fall short. And if we pretend we're not lacking anything, that becomes a barrier between you and the life God calls us to. In this next video, we'll take a look at the Gospel of Mark and how it describes this interaction between Jesus and the rich young ruler. And we'll see what we can learn from that as well.